Hi everyone, this is Owolabi Mayawa from Nigeria and I have a first and second degree in statistics. Um, in this video, I'm going to be showing us um, a topic titled correlation. Alright? Okay, so um, during the course of uh, this topic, we must understand um, some certain things. We must understand, we must have deeper knowledge about um, this topic. All right. Now, the first one, we must be able to understand the term correlation. All right. Now, two, we must know some basic assumptions of correlation. Three, we must understand correlation through graphs. Four, we must be able to compute correlation coefficient. All right. And the last one, we must be able to apply technology to perform correlation analysis. All right. Introduction to correlation. Now, scientists have thought of ways to measure how closely two variables are related all right so for example is the age of a patient related in any way to his or her blood pressure so these are questions for example you might have um, a data set um, in an hospital whereby you have um, 20 young people between the ages of 20 to or let me say you have 10 young people between the ages of 20 years to 30 years and their their blood pressure is actually very high all right so now this is a question to the doctor the doctor will be looking at the question and will be thinking that okay is it that um young people between the ages of 20 to 30 years do they always have high blood pressure all right so now we might also be looking at um, level of income is our level of income related to how much we spend on shopping all right so for myself let's say in the month of january i received um the salary of 100 dollars and i spent um 50 dollars as my expenditure all right so in the month of um, february i received um an increase in my salary i got um, instead of 100 dollars i got 200 dollars and i spent more out of 200 dollars i actually spent like 80 dollars now is a question of this is a question of okay when our level of income when it increases does it actually increase our level of expenditure too all right so these are few questions that brought about the knowledge of correlation i hope you understand all right so there are many lots of questions that actually helped um scientists scientists actually thought of lot of questions then this brought them to the use and knowledge of correlation definition of correlation all right so correlation analysis is a statistical tool used to measure the degree of linear relationship between two random variables it simply tells us how strongly two random variables are linearly linearly related all right so when you have when you're measuring the degree of linear relationship between two random variables okay so for example a linear relationship exists between a father and a son but how close they are is a question we do not have answer to and this is why correlation is useful all right so correlation will give you two things the first one it will give you the degree the degree of linear relationship between these two variables and it will tell us the direction all right the direction now look at the example of a father and a son okay so if you look at the example between a father and a son the, we everybody knows there's a relationship between a father and a son but how close are they these two people the father and the son we do not know so this is a question we don't know so this is 
this is where correlation comes in. Correlation will tell us the, de the degree of the relationship, of the linear relationship between these two people. All right, then it's going to tell us the direction. Where are these two people? Where are they going? Are they going forward or are they going backward? All right. So recall that the word linear relationship is one in which two variables have a direct connection. All right. So which means if the value of x is changed, and um, if the value of x is changed, y must also change in the same proportion. All right. So we talked about an example between a father and a son. So now if you are saying there's a linear relationship between a father and a son for example if father gets himself a car then the son must also get himself a car if the father gets himself a new shoe then the son must also get himself a new shoe all right if a father is a, if a son gets himself a new t-shirt then the father also must get himself a new t-shirt so this is what we call linear rel relationship okay now basic assumptions of correlation now, um, while trying to perform correlation analysis between two variables, some assumptions must be met. If we don't meet these assumptions, then we might not have um, a fantastic or a reliable result. All right, we might not be able to absorb the the the, the results that we get. All right. So the first assumption is linear relationship, like I explained between a father and a son. So there should be exist a linear relationship between two variables. Okay. Now normality. Both variables should originate from a linear, from a normal, sorry, from a normal distribution. All right. These observations that we have, the data points, our data should come from a normal population. It must not be biased. We must not cook, must not use a cooked data. Data that we picked from, um, from, 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 from an whole reliable source or data that we cooked ourselves. All right. So it must come from a normal, um, population, a normal distribution. All right. Now related peers, the third assumption, each observation in the data set should have a pair of values. All right. Now, the observations you have, um, let's say for example, we have two variables, x and y. Now we must have, as as long as we have one x, now there should be a corresponding y. So when we have x one, we must have y one. When we have x two, we must have y two. When we have x three, we must have y three. All right. Now now we can also call this a bivariate distribution. All right. So another word for related pairs, you can also say is a bivariate distribution. Okay, so no outliers. There should be no extreme outliers in the data set. There should be no extreme outliers in the data set. Now, what do we call an outlier? An outlier is a data point that differs significantly from other observations. When you have um, a set of observations, or when you when you, when you draw a graph and you see that um, some variables are actually closer, then there is a particular variable, or, or sorry, a particular observation that is significantly far away from others. Then that is an outlier. Now, this is a graph showing you um, what we mean by outlier, or what are outliers. All right. So you can see in this in this graph, you have some observations that are very close to one another. Then you have these two observations that are very far away from others. They are significantly far away from others. So these are outliers. All right. So generally, outliers are termed as errors. This can occur through when um, during the process of data imputation, when you're inputting maybe um, the value you intend to input is actually ten then you input a figure of 100, all right? So, now, not all outliers are irrelevant. I'm going to say that again. Not all outliers are irrelevant. Some outliers can be helpful indicators, all right? Let's say, for example, you, you want to perform, um, you, want to, you want to create a population model, 
all right a model that that that, that will help you forecast um, a population a certain population all right then you discover that there's an outlier in the data set all right now the first thing to do is to check if this outlier is is, is an error true data imputation all right so if you discover that this outlier is an error then you can correct it now if you discover that this outlier is not true data imputation then perform the analysis with the outlier all right create the the population model with the outlier then the result you know you're going to get a certain result now perform a second analysis without the outlier then try and compare these two results all right so when you compare these two results then you can now say that okay this outlier is actually helpful to the model or is not helpful to the model all right now moving forward understanding correlation through graphs all right now what type of graphs can we understand correlation we can understand correlation through scatter plot now a scatter plot is just a graph whereby you you can plot two variables against each other let's say for example x and y so you cannot comp you cannot plot more than two variables on a scatter plot you cannot plot the three variables or uh, three variable on the data on on the um, on the scatter plot let's say for example x y z no you can only um plot a two variable x and y or you say y and z or you say a and b variable all right now we have three um, um correlation you have three possibilities of correlation when we talk about um, scatter plot all right so now the first one is a scatter plot showing data with positive correlation all right now look at the first graph you have a, a plot of x and y x against y and there's a kind of linear um, the observations form a linear pattern all right a linear upward pattern all right that is what we call a positive correlation all right then you have a second graph is a negative correlation all right there's a linear pattern but it is downward all right so then we have the third one which is a zero correlation or no correlation all right when you when you plot um the, the the two observations and you discover that the observation does not form any pattern whatsoever there is no linear pattern it doesn't form any linear pattern then you can say there's zero correlation between these two variables now correlation coefficient r now during the process of performing correlation analysis we must derive a value there must be a value now that value is what we call correlation coefficient now you must derive a value through uh, the use of formula now correlation to perform correlation uh, coefficient oh sorry to perform correlation analysis there is a formula that we use all right now we need to know how do we interpret the value of correlation now correlation coefficient which is r is a sign that is still actually telling us something all right now a positive value of r means that when x increases y tends to increase all right and when x decreases y tends to decrease all right so that is positive correlation for example like i said earlier about um, um the relationship between a father and a son and we discover that there's a there's a positive correlation between a father and a son all right so we are, we are, we are so this is what you're telling us you're telling us that as the father increases the son also increases, or as the father decreases the son also decreases decrease in terms of everything maybe in terms of numbers of cars numbers of clothes uh, the amount of food they take i hope you understand all right so the, the negative value now the second one is the negative value of r means that when s increases y tends to decrease and when x decreases y tends to increase all right so this is a negative correlation so when there is a negative correlation between the father and the son so let's say the number of cars that the father has as the number of cars 
um, the father has increases then that of the son decreases now if that of the father decreases then that of the son increases all right now a zero value of r means there is no correlation between x and y so that is zero correlation so there's no interpretation for when you have a zero correlation i hope you understand so when we have a zero correlation there's no interpretation for that it means there's no correlation there's no linear relationship we can't measure um, the degree of linear relationship between these two variables all right now here is an example showing a negative correlation between the fuel efficiency of cars and the weight of cars all right now we discover that there's a negative correlation if you look at the graph there's a downward um, straight line or a straight pattern between the fuel efficiency of cars and the weight now if you are going to interpret this graph you're telling us that that increase all right as the fuel efficiency of cars increases then the weight of these cars also decrease or we say that as um as the fuel efficiency of cars decreases then the weight of these cars increases all right so normally when you buy a car for example we, we want the fuel efficiency to increase you you want to buy a, a car that actually maximizes fuel all right so okay so i hope you understand all right now estimating for correlation coefficient so i said earlier and um, in the in the slide that during when we perform correlation analysis there has to be we have to derive a value which is correlation coefficient all right now estimating how which is correlation coefficient now in order to um, to measure the degree of linear relationship between two variables let's say x and y the correct yeah they are like we have a formula we need to use a formula all right now the formula is r equals to now the numerator has n n is the number of data points that is the number of observations given to us the number of um, related pairs that we have all right times summation x y okay so summation x y is the um, the sum of when you multiply your x variables and your y variables then the sum that you have that is that stands for summation x y minus summation x summation y so when you had summation x when you had all values of x okay that gives you summation x then when you had all values of y that gives us summation y now the denominator okay you can see the denominator there is square root then we have n times summation x square minus summation x all squared times open bracket n times summation y square minus summation y all squared all right now in other times you can say the denominator is also called x of x y all right so when you're looking at correlation in terms of um, when it comes to analysis of variance ANOVA all right x of x y all right stands for the denominator then you have for your denominator you have a um, square root of uh, you know half raised to power half when you have um, anything raised to power half that is also uh, square root all right so we have x of x x sum of square of x then then sum of square of y all right okay so below we have um, the full formula of x of x x sum of square of y of x sorry so you can see then we have x of y y all right then we have x of x y okay so you might not bother about um it depends on you which kind of formula you want to use all right so i actually um i prefer using uh, the first one the first comprehensive um, formula which is n um, times summation of x y minus summation of x times summation of y divided by all right so that is what i prefer to use now interpretation of how how do we interpret the value of correlation all right now the value of correlation is always between minus one and plus one all right so you cannot have a value of correlation that is greater than one you cannot have a correlation value of 2.1 
or one point even you cannot have a correlation value of 1.1 or 1.2 no your correlation value must must be between is must must lie between minus one and um, one all right now when you have a one a correlation value of one let's say for example you have you perform a correlation analysis between two variables and you have a value of one all right you know one is actually positive right now that is a perfect um correlation that is a perfect correlation now but when you have a value of correlation that is 0. Point, let's say 0.85 or 0. 0.63 then that is not a perfect correlation but it is a positive correlation i hope you understand now same thing with the minus one when we have a value of minus one that is a perfect negative correlation all right now now example one so we are going to be looking at some examples so that we can understand or we can understand how to perform correlation analysis all right so below we have a data a table of data um, showing um, examination scores of six students or you can say the test scores of six students and the hours used in studying all right so calculate the correlation coefficient so now we have a related pair all right so when we have um, one values of x we must have a corresponding value of y so that is the first one of the assumptions of correlation there must be a bivariate distribution all right now this example was actually um, is not from a real data set it does not originate from a normal population so it's just used for the sake of uh, this video just for illustration purpose all right now you can see for the first student a student studies for one hour his test score is our test score is 10 all right then a student that studies for nine hours their test score uh, is our test score is actually 30 all right okay so we want to know do we have a relationship is there any relationship between the hours they used in studying and the marks the marks the examination marks or the text scores they get all right okay so looking at the formula um, the formula of correlation all right so we have the following estimate now the first one is summation x i told you is the addition of the x values all right so 28 all right now um summation y is one to nine this is the summation the addition of the y values when you add all the y values together you have one to nine now summation x squared when you multiply x two times when you multiply the value of your x the x values x times x we have one six eight all right now we have summation x y when you multiply your x values and your y values then you 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 had the summation all right so you have six eight four now summation y square just like summation x square when you multiply your x and your x so you are you're multiplying the x values two times then you're adding it so you have three one five nine then you have your n n is the number of observations or the number of data point all right which is six or you can say the number of related peers all right which is six now using the formula of correlation your correlation coefficient value is 0 0.683523 all right now looking at this value this is a positive value right okay now now let's go to the interpretation we said based on the sample data because this is a sample data and it does not come from a normal population how I, I think i said that earlier all right the correlation coefficient r is 0 0.6835 We've actually approximated to four decimal place. This implies that increase in the study hours of students increases their examination scores and vice versa. All right. So now we've discovered that there's a relationship between the numbers of um, the, the hours student, six students spend in uh, studying and the, the, the their examination marks. All right. Now we discover that there's a positive relationship, which is telling us that when the study hours of student increases then their examination scores will also increase all right or when 
um, this, the, the number of hours they use in studying, once it decreases, then the examination scores will also decrease. All right. So moving forward to example two. Now, here we are trying to look at the relationship between the hours students use in watching TV and their GPA, which is grade point average. We want to know if there's a relationship, if there's a correlation between the hours they use in watching TV and their grade point average. Now, you can see the first student. The first student used 15 hours to watch TV, then his or her grade point is 1.5. All right, that is very bad. Now look at a student um, that spends um, 20 hours in watching TV. Um, the the, the his, his or her grade point average is 3.25. All right, that is actually um, better. So we don't know um, what might cause this variation. We don't know um, what might happen, but we are going to perform correlation analysis to know maybe there's a linear relationship. All right maybe the numbers of hours students use in study maybe it actually affect their grade point average or it does not affect it all right now okay so look doing the estimate looking at the estimates okay so we can see the correlation value or the correlation coefficient is minus 0 0.3458 all right so that is a negative correlation between the hours of well, uh, hours of watching TV and uh, grade point average of student. Now let's interpret. Let's go to the inter interpretation. So we said based on this sample data, the correlation coefficient R is minus zero point three four five eight. This implies that increase in the hours spent in watching TV decreases student grade point average and vice versa. All right. Now we've actually discovered that there's a linear relationship between our students using watching TV and their grade point average. Now it is a negative correlation. All right. So this is telling us that as long as students keep increasing, when they increase um, their hours in, in watching TV, it will decrease their performance in school. All right. Or when they decrease, uh. When they decrease the number of hours they use in watching TV, then it will increase their performance. All right. Okay. So that is a very good example. Now, how do we apply technology to perform correlation? All right. So now we are, here we are going to we've, we've look at the manual method or the conventional method through the formula. Now we are going to look at how we can perform, how we can use, we can apply technology to perform correlation. Now we are going to be using, um, the technology we are going to be using is R um, software for statistical analysis. All right. Now using R software to analyze example one. All right. So now this, are, this the first um, box contains the hard codes. All right, so x equals to the c is the concatenate function. This is just to help us to input the values of x. Then the y, you need to input also the, the values of y. Then now you plot x and y. This code will actually give us the, the, the scatter plot. All right, it will give us the scatter plot of x and y. All right, then you have. Now the correlation. How to perform the correlation? We have cor, cor, and x and y. Now this code will give us the correlation coefficient value between x and y. All right. Now look at the scatter plot here. All right. Now may looking at this graph, this, this scatter plot, we have a linear relationship, a positive correlation. You can see that the linear there's a linear pattern, upward linear pattern. Now. There seems to be an outlier, all right? There's an outlier in the data, but because the data is not from a normal population, it's just an illustration, so we are going to take the result as it is, all right? So now, looking at the result, now, the result is, uh, we have 0 0.6835232. So this uh, corresponds to the conventional method of formula that we used. If you look at the uh, the first example, 
Now, the example two, now we actually performed um, the correlation analysis for the example two also using the example two data. All right. So if you look at the hard codes, we inputted the values of X values and the Y values. Then we plot, um, we, we, we performed a scatter plot using plot X and Y. Then we also performed correlation using core X comma Y. All right. Now, if you look at um, the graph, the scatter plot, there is a linear pattern, a downward linear pattern which is a negative correlation and there is there, there seems to be also an outlier in the um, in the data but because i told you it's not from a normal population it's just an example uh, we just picked an example for illustration purpose okay so so now looking at the results we have a, a, a negative value which is a negative correlation value between um, the hours of um, of watching tv and the examination scores of student. All right. Now, we are going to talk about correlation is not causation. All right. Now, correlation. There's something correlation does not do. Does not do. Correlation does not tell us that increase in one variable will cause an increase in the other variable. No. Correlation does not cause an increase in one variable. To another variable but it's actually telling us that increase in one variable there will also be an increase in the other variable i hope you get that so in correlation analysis two random variables can be linearly related by going the same direction or otherwise all right so when you perform correlation analysis the correlation these two variables two variables might go the same way or they might go otherwise all right this does not imply that a change in one of the variables will cause an increase or decrease in the other variable all right now looking at the graph there's a graph here now the, 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 the there's a gra graph here uh, there's a plot between um, january and november the blue um, line is actually telling us the ice cream sales all right why the red line shows the shark attacks all right now we can see that there's a linear um, there's a correlation between these two um, variables the ice cream sales we can see that the, 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 the increase in the ice cream sales and we can also see the increase in shark attacks all right now when the thing the, when the uh, the trend drops down we can also see that the, the, the trend of ice cream sales drops down then the trend of shark attacks also drops down all right so there's a correlation between these two but the ice cream this the, the the trend of ice cream does not cause an increase in shark attacks all right so the the ice cream sales actually increase because um because of the sunny weather because the weather is actually hot all right so people will tend to buy more ice cream during hot weather i hope you understand okay then the shark attacks actually happened because more people were in um were swimming in the uh in the ocean all right so when you have more people swimming in the ocean you know it attracts um sharks all right sharks will begin to attack people that are swimming all right so that is so this is a perfect graph this graph actually tells us that correlation is not causation. All right. So both variables actually occurred for different reasons. All right. So I hope you understand. We got that. Now, in summary of everything we've learned so far. Now, we are going to be looking at three things. Three lessons. Now, correlation. Now, I told us before that correlation tells us about the degree and the direction between random variables all right so it measures um, the linear relationship between two random variables all right so it tells us the degree all right the degrees okay the value all right is it 0 0.5 or 0 0.68 then it tells us direction that these two linear values the direction they go all right did they go in the positive direction are they going the same direction or they are going otherwise one is increasing the other is decreasing all right so the second um takeaway 
is the correlation coefficient. We all know that the correlation coefficient lies between minus one and plus one. All right, correlation value cannot go beyond the one. You can have a correlation value of one point one, or one point two, or three point five. All right, and you cannot have a correlation value of minus two point three. No, all right. Now the third, the, now the third one is correlation is not causation, like I just explained in the former slide. One of the one of the variables cannot cause an increase or decrease in the other variable. All right. So I hope you understand. In 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 correlation, one variable cannot cause an increase or decrease in the other variable. So correlation is not causation. All right. Now. For further um, reading, you can look at some of these references that we have, all right, okay. So thank you very much. Thank you for, um, for watching this video.